Sevens, welcome to your daily lesson of mathematics brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. I hope you guys are really well today and looking forward to the next part of our area installment. Please a uh, reminder of the email address on your screen, grade seven at worksheetcloud.com. Please feel free to use it and send me any questions, queries or feedback. Okay, let's get into our uh, menu for today. So as you can see, we're going to do areas part three, which is circles. Uh, we're going to be looking at areas of circles and then we're going to look at uh, a couple of real life problems just to wrap up our area um, series for you. And then we've got our normal warm ups, mental maths questions and challenges on either side of that. So your warm up for today is to work out the value of the symbols. Again, you need to look out for fractions. But go ahead and work that out, and then let's see how you get on with the Jamboard. Okay, so um, there is your puzzle on, on the Google Jamboard. So I'm going to start at the third line. Um, and I know that the mobile phone have got to be equal to each other. So I know that 4 is equal to 8 minus 4. Okay, then I can go to the second line and say 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. I know that the globes need to add up to 1. So they are my fractions that you were warned about. Half plus a half is equal to 1. Okay, I know that the um, letter must be 8 because 8 plus 4 is equal to 12. And then I'll just plug in the gaps here at the bottom, a half plus one plus eight plus one half is equal to 10. And 10 is your final answer. A little bit easier than yesterday, I think. Uh, but well done if you work through that. And yeah, I'll be really pleased if, if you guys are starting to get the hang of these and um, actually work them out um, on the first attempt. So well done on, on getting through that. Your mental arithmetic questions for today. Uh, again, a combination of decimals, fractions, and a percentage question. Go and work through those. Remember, it's not about speed. Uh, it's about quality. Uh, so don't worry uh, if it's taking you a while. Uh, but press pause now and then press play to see how you get on. One is straightforward addition of decimals. Uh, and the key here is to keep the numbers in the correct columns. Okay. Um, and I think I've mentioned to you before that the classic error here is to put numbers in the incorrect column um, and then you obviously add up the wrong numbers. So I encourage you to put zeros in the places where there are gaps just so that it, it looks right uh, it also helps you to avoid ad adding the wrong numbers together. Um, so 8 plus 0 is 8. 9 and 8 is 17. Okay, the 1 and the two zeros is 1. 9 and 3 is 12. Uh, 8, 1 and 1 is 10. And 7 and 1 is 8. Okay. Um, so, yeah, make sure you have the numbers in the correct column. Uh, for the next one, which is a subtraction sum, you'll notice that you're left with a lot of empty spaces. So again, I would encourage you to put zeros in as placeholders, just so that you are aware of what numbers need to be um, subtracted. Uh, and it's going to make your life a lot easier. So here I have to borrow all the way from the beginning. Okay, they are 10 and become 9. So 10 minus 6 is 4. 9 minus 7 is 2. Keep the decimal in the same place. 9 and 6. Okay, now if you want to check, 6 plus 6 plus 0 is 6. Good. 9 plus 0 is 9. Good. 1 plus 8 is 9. 2 plus 7 is 9, and 4 and 6 is 10. So then my answer of 69,124 has to be correct. Okay? Right, so the key there, make sure the numbers are in the correct place value columns. 
Question three is multiplication, long multiplication, uh, 39 multiplied by 45. Here I would say 40 times 45. We know that 4 multiplied by 45 uh, is going to be equal to 180. And then we need to include this uh, multiple of 10. So 40 times 45 is 1,800. But now I need to take off that additional 45. And my answer is 1,755. Okay. Uh, that's the compensation method. So compensate uh, and then subtract at the end. All right. Um, question four is the division of decimals. And notice it's short division. Okay. And we said when we have short division, we were going to use the short division method. And we are dividing by three. So three goes into seven twice. Remainder one. Keep the decimal comma in the same place. Three goes into 19 six times. Remainder one. 3 goes into 18, 6 times, and then 3 goes into 3 once. The answer is 2,661. So if you said 2,661 multiplied by 3, you would get 7,983. Okay? Your next question, uh, question 4 was 8 over 11, subtract 2 over 5, and we know we need a lowest common denominator of 11 and 5 is 55. So 11 goes into 55 five times. 5 times 8 is 40. 5 goes into 55 11 times. 11 times 2 is 22. And that leaves us with 18 over 55. Okay, you can't divide them by 2. You can't divide them by 3 because 55 is not divisible by 5. Not divisible by 4. Not both divisible by 5. Not both divisible by 6. You can keep going through the numbers, but you're not going to be able to simplify that fraction. So your final answer, 18 over 55. Question 6, dividing by 100. And I'm pretty sure by now that you guys are comfortable with dividing by 100. So we know that when we divide by uh, a multiple of 10, that our number gets smaller. Okay, so... Uh, 125 comma 6 becomes 1 comma 2 5 6 okay it gets two places smaller because it's 10 times 10 that makes 100 so two zeros two places smaller two-thirds divided by four okay we know we can write that as two-thirds divided by four over one just so that we have two fractions we know that when we divide fractions, the division sign changes to multiply and the fraction after the division sign gets inverted. So now we've got two thirds times, times a quarter. We can say two times one is two, three times four is 12, and that equals one over six. Alternatively, we could recognize that two goes into two once and into four twice. And now if you multiply one by one is one, and 3 by 2 is 6, and you get the same answer. Okay, then a multiplication uh, of fractions question. Let's create some space. So that's going to be uh, 1 third times 4. Okay, and if I wrote that out 4 times, that's pretty much what we're looking at. Okay, so there you can see that's going to be 4 over 3, and that equals 1 and 1 third if you are asked to change it into a mixed numeral. And then a percentage question to end off on, 70% of 800. And there are different ways to work this out. I'm just going to show you what I feel is the most efficient way. So 70% of 800. I'm going to find 10%. And I know to find 10%, I just divide by 10. So that's 80. So therefore 70% will just be 80 times 7. I know that 8 times 7 is 56, and I need to include that multiple of 10. So 70% of 800 is 560. Okay, guys, some really good practice there of past principles. Always good to keep practicing your arithmetic. Uh, use the strategies we've spoken about. Use the checking methods we've spoken about. 
um, and I'm sure your maths will improve going forward. Okay, so today's main theme is area of circles. Now, yesterday we did circumference of a circle, which was perimeter of a circle, uh, and the um, two different formulas for that was pi times diameter. Remember the diameter is the length of the line that cuts the circle in half. So it goes from one edge to the other edge and through the center of the circle. And the other formula was circumference equals 2 pi r, which is when you're given the radius and you multiply the radius by 2 and then multiply by pi. Both will give you the same circumference. So the area of the circle, we would use the formula pi times radius squared. Okay, so if I go through these examples with you that are on the screen, that's your formula, pi times radius squared. Remember, pi can be found on your calculator, uh, or we can use 22 divided by 7, or we can use 3,14. If I say pi times radius squared, uh, that's 8 squared, okay, and we know that we must square the 8 first, so it's pi times 64. And your answer will be 201,1 centimeters squared. So notice that the, the unit is in square units. Uh, and I've also rounded off to one decimal place. Your second example, again the same formula. Uh, area equals pi times radius squared. You're going to have to square 9.5 and, and multiply that by pi. And you're going to get an answer of 238 comma five centimeters squared, which is rounded off to one decimal place. Okay, so um, that's the area of a circle. Um, and let's move on and see how we can work out the area of a circle using the diameter. So here you can see we've, we've been given the diameter, question three, six millimeters, question four, two comma four meters. Um, but I need to use the same formula. So for question number three, it's not a problem. I know that the diameter is two times the radius. So all I need to do then is halve the diameter to get the radius of three, square three, multiply that by pi, and I get 28,3 millimeters squared. Again, rounded off to one decimal place. You are quite correct if you had said area equals pi times radius squared. And then you had halved that diameter to 1,2 and squared 1,2, multiplied that by pi, and you get an answer of 4.5 meters squared, again rounded off to one decimal place. Guys, here are two examples for you to work out by yourselves. First, work out the area of the clock face, and they've indicated that the radius is 12 centimeters. I'd like you to round that off, please, to one decimal place. And I'd like you to find the area of the radar screen where they've given you the diameter of 60 centimeters. And for that one, I'd like you to round it off to the closest centimeter. Right off you go. First, we know the area is pi times radius squared as indicated in the top right corner. We know that the radius is 12. So we need to square 12, which is 144. And if you multiply pi by 144, you are going to get 452,38. Uh, and I said round it off to one decimal place. So we look at the hundredths column. The second number after the decimal is more than five, which means that the tenths unit, the first place after the decimal, goes up one to 0.4. Your second example to find out the area of the radar screen. The first thing you needed to recognize was that you had to halve the diameter to get the radius of 30. You needed to square 30 to get 900, multiply that by pi, and remember I said round it off to the nearest um, decimal, I mean sorry, the nearest centimeter, and that would have given you um, 2,200, sorry, 2,827 comma 4. Um, and then to round it off to the nearest centimeter, because the comma 4 is less than 5, we keep it at 2,827. Okay, so that's the area of circles. You just need to remember the formulas and remember to answer in square units. 
um, and I'm sure that you guys will be fine moving forward from here. Okay, here's um, a real life problem just to finish off our um, area section for today. So let's read through the question carefully. The lawn is rectangular. So straight away you should be saying, oh, I know what the area of a, a rectangle is and how I need to work it out. And that measures 20 meters by 40 meters. Turf costs 850 per square meter. So the grass costs 850 per square meter. How much will it cost to buy the turf or grass? The second part of the question, the drive is also rectangular and measures 8 meters by 16 meters. So that's the driveway. Each brick is 10 centimeters by 20 centimeters. That's the dimensions of each brick. And each brick costs 1 rand 75. How many bricks are needed and what is the total cost? Now, I'm going to need you to press pause here and I'm going to need you to try and work this out by yourself before we go through it together. Really struggle with the problem uh, if you need to. Um, identify that you've got meters and centimeters. Make sure you understand what the question's asking of you and how many parts you need to work out. Um, like I said, it's not a race. We're looking for quality. Uh, so press pause and give it your best shot. Our first part of the question is how much lawn or how much turf is needed. Now we need to work out the area of the lawn first. And we know from previous lessons that area of a rectangle is equal to length times width or length times breadth. And here they show us that they're going to use base times height of a rectangle, which is pretty much the same as length times breadth or length times width. We know that the measurements are 20 by 40. So we put 20 and 40 into the equation and we get 800 meters squared. So that's the area that needs to be covered in grass or turf. Then we need to figure out the cost of turfing the lawn. We know that it's 8 rand 50 per square meter. We've got 800 square meters. So our um, calculation needs to be 800 times 8 rand 50, which is in, in essence a multiplication of a decimal. I would first multiply 8 rand 50 by 100 and then multiply by 8 and that's going to give you a grand total of 6,800 rand. Out then, well done. The second part of the question was how much and how many bricks, um, how much is it going to cost and how many bricks do I need? So the first thing we need to do is work out the area of each brick. Okay. So the area of each brick is 20 meters times, sorry, 20 centimeters times 10 centimeters. And we know that that's going to give us 200 centimeters squared. So one brick is 200 centimeters squared. Okay, next we need to work out the area of the drive. Um, and the area of the drive is going to be similar to the way we worked out the area of the lawn. And that's going to be length times breadth or length times width. That's going to give you 8 times 16. And that's going to give you 128 meters squared. Now you will notice that you've got the area of the brick in centimeters squared. And you've got the area of the driveway in meters squared. Okay, you needed to recognize that and identify that. You'll remember that when we did... Uh, measurements and we spoke about square meters and um, that to convert it to centimeters we need to do what I've indicated on the screen which is one meter by one meter which is a hundred centimeters times a hundred centimeters so one meter squared is ten thousand centimeters squared we have a hundred and twenty eight square meters that we need to convert to centimeters so it would be 128 multiplied by 10,000. The mistake that is often made here is that students write 128 times 100 because there are 100 centimeters in a meter, but they neglect to recognize the fact that we're talking about square meters. And a square meter is not 100 centimeters, it's 100 centimeters times 100 centimeters. Okay, that's very, very important to understand. So now I know that my area of my driveway is indeed 1,280,000 centimeters squared. 
Now I can go work out how many bricks of 200 centimeters squared can fit into the 1,280,000 centimeters squared. And that is a um, division sum. And that is what the division sum looks like. I would first divide by 100 to get 12,800. Then I would divide by 2 to get 6,400. So I know I need 6,400 bricks. Then I need to work out the cost of the bricks. Each brick costs 1 rand 75. So I know I need to go 6,400 times 1 rand 75. You could say 6,400 times 1. Then 6,400 multiplied by 3 quarters. Uh, and then add those together. Um, there are different methods you could use to work out that multiplication of decimals. Your final cost is going to be 11,200 Rand, and that's just for bricks. Okay? So, guys, there we've worked out the area of the lawn, uh, the amount of lawn we need to buy, the cost of the lawn uh, we need to buy. We've worked out um, the area of the driveway. We've worked out the area of a brick. We've worked out how many bricks we need. And we've also worked out the cost of those bricks. So if you've managed to understand what we've just worked through um, and you've been able to calculate it, calculate it correctly, bearing in mind the conversion of meters squared to centimeters squared, then you can be really confident and happy about your progress. And you should be uh, looking forward to uh, grappling with these types of questions when you get back to school. Guys, there's your uh, finisher for today, which is the game of 24. We almost finished the blue level and we'll be moving on to the hardest yellow level. Uh, and I encourage you to use each number on each card to try to come up with the answer of 24 using a combination of the operational signs, or perhaps you only need to use one, perhaps you need to use two. Remember that second part of the challenge is how many different ways can you make up the answer of 24. Great sevens, thanks very much for joining us today. I hope the area of circles and the real life problem made area a little bit more understandable. Um, again, please feel free to send me any questions on grade seven at worksheetcloud.com. Have a look at the online activity and memo, <clears throat> excuse me, that I've put up on the worksheetcloud.com website for you today. Um, and yeah, have a great day. I'm looking forward to catching up with you guys again soon. All the best.